Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We're gonna head into Celestic Town now. See what the what the haps on the crap. What's going on? It's an old woman staring at some stairs. Stairsing. Small child staring at this door. A Pokemon created the Sinnoh region. Mm. Wow. Who would have thunk? Let's talk to this gentleman. And be rewarded with the Analog Watch Poketch app. Great! This is wonderful! What I would do without this? Let's check it out. What does it look like? Ooh, how do I do? Okay. There we go. Not annoying at all. Step counter doing great. Current team also great. There, is, there it is. Look, in case you like to be old school and fool the kids these days. I remember being a youth and having to do little assignments where we would have clocks and we'd have to say what time it was. But nowadays, kids are soft. Not even knowing how to tell time. <laughs> Heck with them. Okay, I would love to have a pair of wise glasses. Cause I'm a wise... Wise glasses for wise... You know what I'm saying? So here at this store, we can finally buy Dusk Balls. Which is interesting, this store has some different balls for us. Dusk Balls, Quick Balls, Timer Balls. So these are kind of opposites. Quick Ball is when you'll throw at the beginning of a fight. Hopefully you can nab a Pokemon. Timer Ball is the opposite, so I think it's every four turns, it slowly increases the likelihood that you'll catch that Pokemon. So they're kind of gimmicky, but whatever. And Dusk Balls are just great. So if you're playing the game at night, or if you're inside a cave, greatly increases your chances of catching a Pokemon. They're pretty useful. And here's just some regular stuff. I don't think I have any revives. I do not, so. Go ahead and grab some of those. We might need them in this episode for some reason. Hmm. And just, you know, kind of the same old, same old stuff. Thanks, Graham and Gramps. Appreciate it. So we're just going to keep touring around the outside. Around the outside. Thankfully, she was able to tell us that. I never could have figured that out on my own. Sure. That guy looks like local history. Gosh dang fossil. Okay. This is some profound NPCing. What would I do without it? Okay. So now that we have effectively explored everywhere, let me check my team. Nope, that's not the team button. I am gonna mess that up forever. Okay, so everybody's a little banged up. I probably should heal here in a moment. And also, I'm going to swap out some Pokemon because I need to... Hit the wrong button again, as I do basically every time. So I'll just give you a little bit of a... A little bit of a heads up. You might want to start prioritizing maybe some Psychic Pokemon. Maybe some Dark-type moves. Hmm? Could be interesting, potentially. Some ghost moves could be useful. I don't know. You don't have to take my word for it, but do boop, but do whatever you want. I'm actually gonna just leave the team the way that it is now, because there's some Pokemon that I want to get some experience. Others, not so. Oh, okay, we just got railroaded by this old lady. That sounds horrible. She's running the train on us. So the. Team Galactic Grunt from earlier threatened to be a, a bomber, Unabomber, wants to blow up the town with a bomb, what a jerk. He was trying to run away from us earlier, he was the one that we kept chasing after and he wanted to... He kept running away like a coward. So maybe we can put him in his place and stop his evil ways. What does the sign say? Ooh. 
Celestic Town, the past lives. Okay. So this shrine's kind of cool. Reminds me of the shrine in the Ilex Forest that lets you get a Celebi if you've got a GS ball in a Japanese version of Crystal. Which I never have. So, heck on me. So this is kind of cool. Got some cave drawings of two strange looking Pokemon. This one looks like it's a little pink and this one's kind of a little bit on the blue side. I wonder what those could mean. Hmm. So this guy wants to use the galactic bomb to blow up this town where the past lives. Um, how about not? Instead, we'll take him down. The Team Galactic Grunt. So, still following in line kind of with the theme of the bug Pokemon. You know, I, it's it's like Pokemon that were easy for them to acquire. So, it makes sense, I guess, that they'd have a Beautifly. Ooh, Scarlet should learn the move Toxic. Toxic is great. Toxic is one of those moves where I kind of like to be a bit of a butt with it. If I can combine Toxic with Leech Seed. I almost forgot what it was called. I'll do it. Having that double whammy of their Pokemon's health slowly being whittled down. Especially with Toxic, because it does more damage over time. And then the Leech Seed helping me to recover my health. So I do appreciate that. Pretty nice. No idea what that does? Great! But I like Krogunk a lot. I like the evolution of Krogunk a lot. It's not very strong. But the addition of it kind of being the one of the baddies. Staple Pokemon is fun. I enjoy that. But yeah, for a guy that's supposed to be going rogue and blowing up cities... They didn't send their best. Not that they should, because that would be kind of bad, but... A one horse town. This isn't... yeah. I don't know what that was all about, but we saved the day. Granny is very thankful. And we have the old charm from Cynthia. This is her grandmother. So giving the old charm to the old woman. I guess I could have looked at it to see what it looked like, but I forgot. So there's that. So we're offered to take a look inside her old ruins. See what this is all about. Perhaps we'll find something neat. Perhaps we'll find some more cave drawings of uh, three smears on the wall. So there's that. The game is very apt to point out the obvious. So that's pretty neat. But yeah, there's uh, three creatures here on the wall. Makes you wonder what they're trying to... Maybe they're protecting something? A triad of Pokemon? That's never been done before. Thankfully, Granny is going to hook us up. She is so clutch. Gives us the TM's first Surf. Oh, yeah. Surf is probably... Arguably the best TM slash... Eight slash... HM, although it's great that she says that Cynthia just isn't using it anymore. Yeah, she just casually has one of the best HM. She's like, nah, I don't need it. But if you saw what she said correctly, there's no free rides with Surf. You gotta earn it. But first, we have to talk to this guy. He's looking a little pale. Maybe he should uh, get some sun. Some vitamin D's always gonna help. He's in a wax poetic for a moment. Ooh, see that little smile? Now we know his name. Now we can develop this relationship. It's all about who you know. Oh, now he's sad again. Do you see how expressive this game is? Look at that. Especially with him not having eyebrows. So he remembers us. We might have made quite the we must have made quite the impact on him. 
And yep, that's it. That's literally it. That's why you come here is to get surf. It's not, you know, it's not really gonna blow you away. I don't know if there's anything up here that we need to do. Looks like we could do some trainer battles first, but as I was trying to say before I distracted myself and interrupted myself, we are gonna be headed back to Hearth Home City. I have no idea why the game is organized like this. Because in Platinum, you can fight gyms uh, four, five, six, or three, four, five. In any order you want to. There's nothing to prevent you from doing that, I believe. Which I think is nice because I don't need to break this. What am I doing? I'm just giving this beauty of some work, helping it to freelance a little bit, some contractual hours. But yeah, it's uh, I don't know. Like if you're able to do it in any order that you want to, why would they revert back to a worse way? But then again, that could be, that's kind of the case, I would say, for a good portion of this game. Like, I was looking back on it, and I'm just trying to think, like, what were some of the ways that they improved this game? And there's not really a ton, if I'm being completely honest. I wouldn't say that it's bad. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's a pretty faithful recreation of the original one, but that's not really what you want considering that the original game came out in like 2005 and you know it's heck in 2022 now that's 17 years later you'd think that there would be more, I mean the quality of life stuff is good like the the TMs and HMs and all that stuff oh boy this sucks so that's nice is Sky Attack a two-part move I think it is um do I have anything that will prevent me from being hit by this oh. Yeah, Buster will be fine. But I guess what I'm trying to say is they did they did some good work with it. You know, the expanding the underground, the HMs becoming essentially TMs, and you not being forced to waste a move slot on them is nice. That that's good. I enjoy that. But they also did the game really well 17 years ago. It's called Pokemon Platinum. So, I don't know if they're banking on doing that again. Is that something that they're going to be... If there's going to be a... A threequel? You know, you... You waited until you got the... The third game, because that, that was kind of what the norm was back in the day. Back in the DZ. That was a pretty common thing to do. Is you would have... The first two games come out, and then like maybe like six, six months to a year later... You... Would have that third version come out. Okay, this guy is full of self-reassurance. Good for him. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, if this isn't a battle, this is a waste of time. Oh, it's not a battle, but it's not a waste of time because we get things. The best things in life are free. Excellent. So actually, you know what? We got some TMs. Let's go ahead and take a peek. Do -do -do. Let's organize those by newest. There's four I haven't checked out. I have not done my, oh, oh, a ton. Great, I'm doing awesome. So here's Shadow Ball. The user hurls a shadowy blob at the target. This may also lower the target special defense stat. That's a great move. We picked that up from some of our exploring aerial ace. It's a move that Sharon knows. User confounds the target with speed and slashes and never misses. That's really good. Not entirely sure how Scarlet can learn that. Brine, this is the move we got as Reward for beating Crash or Wake. If the target's HP is half or less, this attack will hit with double the power. That could be a good move if you have a water type that's kind of a tank and you're getting below half damage, but you know, you're kind of gambling with your own HP. Psych up, we just got this. User hypnotizes itself into copying any stat change made by the target. That's gimmicky, probably a waste. And finally, Surf, which is great. Only Buster can learn Surf. But the user attacks everything around it by swamping its surroundings with a giant wave. It's also one of the Poketch's hidden moves. So it's kind of weird that we only get three of Surf, but, you know. Let's see. We have Aqua Jet, which is a fast move. And Buster's not really a special attacker, but Surf is also 50 power points higher. 
So we'll go ahead and use that. You don't need any Pokemon to surf anymore, so if you want the moves, then you just use the move. So that's pretty nice. So we, we weren't going to get into a fight. Mr. TMs, Mr. Psychup did not want to fight us, so instead we'll challenge Ruin Maniac Harry. He's looking a little scruffy. So we still have Brandy the Bronzor. Hopefully in the near future we'll be getting some more evolutions. Our team is kind of, I don't know, like two-thirds of the way there. You know, we're not quite ready to evolve everybody, but we're pretty close. So... Just prepare yourselves for that. Once it gets to a certain point, there's not going to be too many more evolutions unless I pick up a weaker Pokemon on the grass. I don't even know what's in these areas, to be honest, so I might just pop into the grass for, you know, two to three random battles and see if I can't just dilly-dally a little bit. Just let a man dilly-dally. What's the point if you can't dilly-dally in your life? So there we go. That was a very scintillating fight. With Ruin Maniac Harry. That's right. This looks like this is probably a fight with a ninja kid. Yes. I still can't get over their hair. Like, how do how do you get your hair to look like that? Like, I can't tell. It's like flopping up and down. It's like split in the. It's like split in half. Also, Ninja Boy Nick is a great name. That's awesome. I'm a big fan of it. Also, from this perspective, this makes Skorupi look gigantic. Maybe it is. But... I can imagine I'd want to be hanging around any place that's got scorpions that size. But all these Skorupis that I've been fighting from other people, they have awesome movesets, and my Skorupi's moveset kind of sucks. I'm not happy about that. Like I was saying before, Maybe in the, in the alternate universe, I'll go into the underground and poke around. Ooh, Golbat. Steven's a good choice for this. Ooh, but Steven's pretty high level. I don't really need Steven to do that. Let's get Buster back out there. I love using Ice Beam. Buster is one of those Pokemon that I wasn't... It was on my initial list of Pokemon that I wanted on my team. Because I love Weasel. I love Floatzel. The design, the Pokemon itself is pretty good. It's fast, it hits pretty hard. It can shoot Ice Beams out of its butthole. Like, who doesn't love an Ice Beam butthole shooting otter? I was gonna say beaver, I was like, this is not a beaver. I'm just getting, I'm getting hit with crits all over the place. Now I can show off Surf. You can use these moves in battle, thankfully, which is pretty nice. You just can't use them out of battle, so we won't be able to Surf on whatever proverbial Pokemon it's going to be. I don't know what they choose. So we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, Weedle's always been a choice. And then I was like, you know what? Nah, I, I caught Samuel the Shell off. So I was like, nah, I don't want to double up or anything. And then it turns out that I did because I was just randomly in the underground and I saw a Weasel and I was like, okay, well, you've convinced me. This might be another fight too. This guy is running around getting some getting some macho cardio going on. He's psyched up. We already got psyched up. Ooh, black belt scene, Sean, Shane. That's definitely Sean. I'm just goofing with you. But I had a preset list of Pokemon that I was hoping to kind of put on the team. It was really dependent on what I remembered. That was kind of the big thing. Wasn't sure exactly what Pokemon would be available if this game was going to use the Platinum decks, or if it was going to wind up sticking with just the original one from Diamond and Pearl. It does appear that it is the Diamond and Pearl decks, which is a little frustrating because, like I was saying, I think Platinum righted a lot of the wrongs. Not to say that Diamond and Pearl had a ton of them. I mean, it was a pretty well-made game, you know, continuing on. The enjoy enjoyability, enjoyfulness, those are not how you say those words of Generation 3. I mean, at least at least Emerald. Ruby and Sapphire are pretty rough. But I guess it, maybe it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of the same thing. Where Diamond and Pearl were for their time unique. 
and they tried to do some new things. They did some things well, they did some other things not so well, but, you know, Game Freak, once they kind of get the feedback and the, in the, you know, you have millions of people essentially playtesting your game for free. I mean, not for free, because they're paying for it, but you, you can kind of figure out the flaws and then make amends for it. Because back then there wasn't really like DLC in the same way that there is now. Like if a game sucks now, they will just put out a patch and be like, hey, there it is. We fixed it. We fixed our incomplete game that we shouldn't have charged you $60 plus for. But, you know, that wasn't... What am I doing? Can I not use this? There we go. I would like to use... Oh my goodness, how do I do this? I did not mean to... Okay, great. I just want to use... Oh my gosh. Why can't I not make this huge? Grow! This keep... Okay. Is that... Is that... Okay. There we go. Oh my gosh. I just had to tap the button. I was holding it. I was going crazy for a second. I was like, what am I doing wrong? Yeah, there's a lot of things that they did well with Pokemon Platinum, which I was really happy about. And then they were kind of just like, nah, we're just going to go back on our word and, you know, not really do what we need to do. Because Pokemon Platinum opened the game up a lot and it let you explore more. The Pokedex was a million billion times better. And then, you know, we're just kind of saddled with not great stuff. Also, I kind of just want to hit the underground for a second. No, I don't want to trade. I like to trade my brain for one that works with hitting the buttons the right way. Can we do this? I want to go underground for a moment. Let's play with ourselves. Woo! Going underground. I haven't really been exploring too much or like using the underground. I mean, I kind of lied. I did. You can see that all these areas are basically uncovered. So I was trying to... There's a certain Pokemon. If you uh, find the proper NPCs under underground here, there's 32 of them, which you actually have to basically play the entire game first. Then you can unlock the privilege of catching a special Pokemon. One that comes from the Lost Tower right outside of Salacian, uh, Salacian, Salacian town. Isn't that fun? And the odds of finding each NPC down here is like 3%. So that's awesome, isn't it? That's not a waste of time. But anyway, yeah, I opened up all these little, uh, these little areas. Because I wanted to, I was just kind of wandering around. Yes. And this is fun, right? This is captivating. You can kind of, you can find some pretty cool Pokemon down here. But then you also have to watch out because, oh no. You can get bamboozled. We'll see how high level these Pokemon are. Probably way out of my range. The last time I came down here, the majority of the Pokemon were like level 30 and I was like level 10. So they had no, no problems clapping my cheeks. Okay, they're more reasonable. I don't know, I don't know how this scales, but they haven't in a while, apparently. I don't know. I mean, I'm seeing Pokemon here that I had before. Like, I don't remember there being Gravelers or anything. So that's neat, but in general, you know, this is just me noodling around to see if there's anything different. That's how I wound up catching the Murkrow. So, and I mean, like, so there's like, you know, there's some older stuff. There's the Badoo. There's a Golbat. There's a bunch of Gravelers that I don't care about. So I don't think I'm going to find anything. I'm going to go through one more room here, see if I can find a room that's not uh, barren wasteland or like walking into a volcano. Because our next step after I do this is it's another gym, which is kind of funny. Ooh, hello. This is an NPC like I was talking about. Kawika! Great. Good for you. I have no idea what any of that means. Actually, I do. So there's those pedestals that you can buy in the Veilstone store. Apparently, those pedestals will allow you to place. You can, well, you know what? You know heck and what? Let's just go ahead and do it. Let's just go ahead and do this right here, right now. I don't know if I, what the tool is that I need for it. Where is it? Do I have to hit a button? I don't remember how to do this. Oh, I don't have it yet. We're gonna go up real quick. 
And I don't know... We're gonna fly! So this is this this episode's very organized. Um, I want to say it's in Naturna City. This is where we got the Explorer Kit from that old man who was very excited to see us use it. So this is the Explorer House? Yes! He's digging down for adventure. He loves getting his hands dirty. So I believe that if you talk to him, he will give you stuff. So you just keep talking to him. Obviously, we've already gone under the underground and gotten some cool items. So now, I don't care. I don't care about any of that or anything else he has to say. Screw you, old man. But we're going to go back underground once again, solo Uno. And I didn't really have intentions of showing this off because, like, it's kind of irrelevant. I'm not going to make much of it. Some people might be really into this, and that's cool. Good for you. It's kind of lost on me a little bit. But, uh... Where is the... Did he not... Did he not just give us... A, hold on a sec. There it is. So, you can get one of these. And... You have to keep going back to him, I think. To use it. Can I not use this? How do I... I just want to... Yes, okay, you just have to click the wall. So this is not a good spot for a secret base, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, I can't... Okay. I can't go... So you... <laughs> so you can't just go in. You can't just go in your own secret base. You have to click the button. That's great. Great gameplay. And if you click this, you can place a statue. You have this grid. I'm not sure if this grid grows over time. But those little boxes that we would get when we would um, when we would be digging in the wall you can place here these statues and when you place statues depending upon the type of the pokemon that it is it increases the likelihood that that type of pokemon will be able to be found so right now we have a prevalence leaning towards electric type Pokemon, which is cool. Not that I'm gonna really care about that, but... So, see, it even worked already. There's the electric type Bidoof. That's great. There's Whoopers and Quagsires and Noctowls and great Pokemon that are just really doing it for me. So, yeah, you come down here. You can build your secret base. Remember where it is. It's gonna have a little butthole in the wall. Probably never gonna go back to it again. But... You know, it is what it is. Also, these diglets, I learned what these are. In the in the left, right below the map, there's a 40 bar. If you can get that bar up to 40 by running into these diglets, or sometimes Dugtrio. Diglets give you one mark. Dugtrio give you three. You have the chance to potentially fill that bar up, and then you'll trigger some special mode, where for, I think, four or five minutes, you can have the likelihood of digging that will lead to, oh gosh, that will lead to uh, like shiny, special, super cool, definitely not gimmicky boxes. So if you're into all that, more power to you. I think the Grand Underground is cool that they added these little realms where you can find Pokemon, but I also think it's just kind of, eh. I'm not trying to complain here, by all means. Enjoy the underground. Don't let me, don't let me take that away from you. If you like to go underground around town, then do that. You should do, you should do what makes you happy. I'm just reflecting on the source material that they had that was already good and they just didn't really do more with it, which is a little disappointing, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so I am gonna follow the same rules once again. If there is, with the team here, like I was gonna try to say before I forgot to speak, the battles that I'm gonna do, I'm definitely going to make sure that the team up until, up until we fight Fantina, Fantima, whatever her name is, 
I'm gonna have all six Pokemon just because I want them to gain experience, but the fight against her is gonna be the old however many she has versus however many I have, which will be, I think, three on three. So here we go, we're in Hearth Home now. Fantima is the ghost type trainer, which is pretty nice. And her gym's a little academic. We'll say that. So you'll take this lift here. You'll finally be able to allow, be allowed to do it once you have Surf. You have to have it first. And you have to do some equations. So here we go. Some arithmetic. What is 3 plus 5 plus 7? Well, we know that it is 15. However, if you answer the questions correctly, you don't get to fight trainers. You don't get that valuable experience. So instead, uh, 2, I don't know. Now we can fight children as our reward. See, isn't that better? And they know you, you will get harassed by these children. Every fight that you do for getting things incorrect, they just know. They're trying to give us a hard way to go. Well, heck on them. Maybe we really didn't know. Also, Charlie reassured by our scent. That's kind of weird. More power to him. We haven't actually used Charlie in a hot minute. Crasher Wake was not really a good place for Charlie to be. So I'm just going to try to spread the experience and then I'm going to obviously go with the Pokemon that I think are going to be best. If you can't figure out already what they are, then I'm pretty sure you can figure out which ones they are. So it's a ghost gym. They're going to be using ghost types. Something that's interesting about this gym. I guess I could point it out when I see it, but it does have some of my favorite Pokemon. The Ghastly line is definitely up there for sure. X is a cool move. Our Scarlet is falling behind. Hopefully she can get some cool moves going forward. Uh, that did more than half of our HP. So we'll swap Scarlet out. See, I can do math. But anyway, this gym has a Pokemon in it that if you don't catch it on a certain Friday, and you don't see it in this gym because you skip the trainer battles then you won't be able to complete the Sinnoh decks so just keep that in mind it's one of those things that's kind of important that if you're a completionist or if you you know want to play the entire game that you'll do that most of the post game stuff is kind of locked behind the national decks which is kind of unfortunate but so far so good I believe there's like four or five of these battles, which is nice. I think four is kind of a healthy number for for gym battles. I don't know if you can do battles based on all the doors. Or if you did, okay. So yeah, just make sure that you keep going in the wrong ones. You can keep fighting all the trainers that are available. You do want to do that if you want the experience. It's probably a good idea. You'll get a good peek into the potential Pokemon you'll be facing in this gym, which is nice. Hopefully Charlie likes the way we smell again. We put on some new cologne just for him. Really smelly. You'll want to probably be around, I would say, high 20s, early 30s for this gym. Since you can't just take them on in whatever order you want to, you're gonna have to you know, it'll scale, the level curve will scale with what you do. Whereas if you were playing Platinum, I'm gonna keep waxing poetic about Platinum because I love it. If you play Platinum, then you're gonna have to, you can play them in any order, which is kind of good and bad. It's good that it gives you the autonomy to choose what gym you wanna do in whatever order you wanna do it. But the downside is that the levels are, I, I don't, I remember them being a little bit closer together, which is kind of disappointing. But uh, yeah, the, the positive side about going to this gym is you get to beat up kids. So, heck yeah. So there we go. The answer is 15. We figured out basic arithmetic. On to the next challenge. What are they going to throw at us this time? What is 12 plus 28? Well. The answer is not the middle one, is it? Well, let's see if it's this one. What could it be? 
Looks like we're about to beat up on a Girl Scout. I'm actually really excited for the month of February that it is currently- oh, it's a can- oh, sorry. Sorry, Drew. You're wearing Girl Scout uniform. So, I'm excited for February because it is the month that Girl Scout cookies start. So, for those of you here living in the old US and A, Girl Scouts is a pretty great organization. Go ahead and support them if you can. Toss some money, buy some delicious cookies from those cute little, little kiddos. I've got some family that are the Scouts of Girls, and I did not hesitate to toss some money their way, get some delicious cookies. My favorite are the tag along cookies, or I think they're called peanut butter patties, depending upon where you live. I think the branding is different based on who the distributor is but they're chocolate and peanut butter cookies. It kind of tastes like a Reese's cup. These on Sumi Hershey's. And they're delicious. So those are great. I know a lot of people are big fans of uh, Thin Mint. Thin Mint, which is the Thin Mint. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of the combination of chocolate and peanut butter. I know that's for a lot of people, it's very classic, very classic. They love maybe a mint chocolate chip ice cream. I think that is yuck. So I would not want that. I do not want a mint chocolate chip. I do not want it Sam I am. Oh, Charlie is really far behind. I'm actually gonna keep him in. Oh, he was closer up in level. But yeah, so I'm not a, I'm not a fan. If you are, more power to you, but I just, eh. Chocolate and peanut butter is kind of the, the, the leaning that I would have. I think it's good. I'm a big fan. All right, let me check this one last time. Okay, so the answer is 40 for those of you who may be mathematically challenged, like I am most of the time. Oh, here we go. Now we get to fight the Girl Scout. Oh, it says Picnicker, which is weird, like... I don't know how you identify as that. Cheyenne. Like, how do you tell people, like, oh, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm picnicking. I'm a picnicker. Now, you have to be careful with how you say that, because that's a questionable word. Anyway, here is the Pokemon in question. Charlie is a little nostalgic right now, but we're going to beat up on this Drift Loon, Bloom, Bloom, Loon. Drift Loon is the Pokemon. This is Dimitri, the first form of Dimitri that we found outside the Valley Windworks. You're going to need to fight this Drift Loon or catch your own. And in the process, you will be able to complete the Sinnoh Dex. Without it, you won't be able to. So just keep that in mind. You have to do this specific fight, or wait till Friday and catch yourself a Drifloon. This is an easier way to do it if you don't have any intentions of catching Drifloon, just to be, you know, completely honest. So oddly enough, using a ghost type move on a ghost is pretty darn effective. It would be fun to use Dimitri in this fight, but unfortunately, because ghost moves are effective against ghosts, kind of a... Uh, a net loss. It's like dragon types being strong against dragons, so we don't want that. We will not be using Dimitri in our final three Pokemon. I believe these are the last doors of fights. Anyway, that's we've already fought four trainers, so I think these are the last three. So there we go. A little multiplication for you. Three times thirteen. It's the old thirty-nine. But we're going to go ahead and assume it's 33, right? Yes, we get to beat up on kids by being wrong. It's the reward we've always wanted. This game just gets me. Like, see, this makes sense. School kid Mackenzie. Oh, I guess you could do this fight too. You know, she's a school kid, but like, what is a, what is a picnicker? What is that? What does that even mean? Somebody going on a picnic? Like, is that how you, is, is that the, the identity you want? People are going to see you out on a hike or something. Like, oh, they're a hiker, or, you know, going out for a swim somewhere by the beach. But the moment you lay that blanket down, you're like, mm -mm -mm. you're going on a picnic now. That's your that's your core identity, and you're not changing it. I will not allow that. So Mackenzie's helping us out. She's got two Drift Loons. I remember having recently played Legends Arceus, Arceus Legends, and, you know, there's a day-night cycle in that game. Kind of reminded me a little bit of when you're playing Ocarina of Time. Notice how I said that, Ocarina of Time. And when you go out into the Hyrule Fields and there's those, those Stalfos that pop up, 
I think that's what those are. Ooh, she's so angry. Good. What'd you get for having a bowl cut? Anyway, in the the skeletons pop up, right? That's pretty cool. When I went into whatever the the area was that I was, oh, we're gonna about to beat up on this nerd. Anyway, when I did the the Legends Arceus first area. There were like 8 million billion Drifflim. They were just all over the heckin' place. It was kind of ridiculous. I wasn't really expecting it. Now, part of me wants to like not really cheese this upcoming fight, but I'm also like not convinced that I'm even gonna survive. Because I know that like Charlie could be potentially a good choice here because it's got strong special attack. Special defense is pretty good. Unfortunately, it's not very fast. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, I don't think when I'm in here that I can change my team up. Is that correct? Yeah, that's dumb. That is dumb. Now, I do believe that at this point, the next room when I pick the right one is going to be the boss fight. So I'm just going to go ahead and preemptively go this way. We're going to go heal up. And then we'll fight. Because I, I don't know. When I did it against Crash Awake, like I got it. I understood what I was trying to do. Having all the Pokemon, though, it did feel kind of like I was cheesing it a tiny bit. Because I would have had to actually like legitimately reset. Had things gone south. But, you know, it is what it is. Where is the heck in Pokemon Center? I'm actually going to do it for real. I'm only going to use the three, like I said. To be fair. But really, you know, this fight in and of itself isn't super challenging as long as you have some dark type moves. So, just keep that in mind. So, let's go ahead and decide here. Nope. Nope. Yes. Okay, so here we go. We've got our box here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to use Scarlet. That is a horrible choice. Sorry, Scarlet. Dimitri would probably get destroyed right away. So let's go with, to make it fun, you know, I could use Steven. I'm not gonna do that. So Charlie Miguel Buster will be our Pokemon of choice as we move forward. There's the gym, almost walked past it. And we'll go ahead and hopefully just take on Fantima. It's gonna be really embarrassing if I actually have more battles to fight. Hopefully I do not. I need to look up what the rooms were. Okay, I almost had to, I actually had to do the math in my head there because I almost forgot what it was. So speed running, I don't need to talk to that side. Speed running is not something I would be doing here. We're actually uh, slow walking. Hmm. Is that the opposite of speed running? Long playing, I don't know. I'm just making up words at this point. I'm going to check very quickly to make sure that all of my movesets are good. I don't know if I have anything particularly strong against ghosts that I could use Charlie for, but please just be one. Oh my gosh. Well, I goofed wrong. So I'm going to be doing, <laughs> doing some battles with these guys. I mean, I was just kind of using Charlie anyway. It's fine. It's fine. And hey, you know, less experience for my Pokemon. Overall, I wasn't expecting to have to fight six trainers in this gym. It's quite a bit if you want to really look at it like this. So hopefully things go my way. I do have healing items and revives and stuff. So, you know, worst comes to worst. I can get my team of three in fighting shape before I go and take Fantima on. I mean, you know. The whole point of me bringing some of these Pokemon was because they were a little under-leveled, so it is fair. I'm just going to keep cranking out flamethrowers. I'd love to find ways to make these fights more exciting, but also part of it's like there isn't really a way to do that just because of how simple they are and because of how over-leveled I am. Not on purpose, but in general, you know what I'm saying? So there's Haunter. You're going to see quite a few of those. And it's kind of a bit of a bummer that the best Dark-type move we have with Miguel right now is Assurance. 
I think that there's better ones on the horizon, so don't be too worried about it. Ooh, and here's our first peek at a Gengar. Gengar's a great Pokemon. I remember having the, the Gengar Pokemon card when I was a kid. Gengar is incredibly fast. So, just be mindful of that. Having a dark type Pokemon here though will be very good because ghost types not strong against your dark types and your dark types are strong against ghost types. So, funny how that works. What a coinky day. So there you go. Get some level ups on the team. This is kind of where you want to be. I'd say like Maybe, I don't know, I, I would prefer to maybe approach this fight being like three to four levels lower just because it is a bit of a butt to play through this and be over leveled. It's not quite as fun. I mean, these recent gym battles haven't really been challenging for me. The Maylene fight was kind of tough just because her Lucario, the, the, what was it, the light screen that was put up was the one that kind of impeded my progress a little bit. That was kind of annoying, but in general, you know, it's kind of NBD. Not too worried. Crasher Wake was easy because, you know, it's water Pokemon. And if you have anything that's remotely good against water Pokemon, you'll be fine. Which, I mean, there's a ton of counters to water Pokemon. Ghost types are a little bit different. You know, you might have, you might have a psychic type, which is good but then you run the risk of these guys probably all having Shadow Ball or Shadow Claw or, you know, Shadow Paw. Well, that's fun, great. But Charlie's actually getting pretty close to leveling up. So bringing him into this arena is very good. I like the opportunity that I'll have to potentially get Charlie to evolve by the end of this fight. So that's very nice. And we'll wind up having I think maybe three not fully evolved Pokemon yet, which is really good. I'm a big fan of that. Ooh, Miguel wants to, use, wants to learn Turd Cutter. So there we go. I don't know if that's better than Wing Attack in any way. It is a special based move and Miguel Murkrow is more of a physical attacker. So it is not better. It's a critical hit lander. We'll just go ahead and give up on that. Not super useful. Now we're trying to do, but they do have a Drift Blimp, which is the evolution of Drifloon, which is what we have. We have Dimitri, and you would think, oh, it can now fly? That's interesting, because Drift Blimp also knows Phantom Force, which is basically the ghost version of fly. So that's pretty interesting. This is going to hurt. Oof. So hopefully if Fantima has Drift Blimp, it does not know fly. Because we can take it out, as long as we can survive the hit, so we'll see how that goes. That's a little scaly. We're just getting level ups left and right. Buster wants to learn Whirlpool. Whirlpool was an HM back in the old gold silver days. And it sucks. So no, we will not be using that. It makes me think back though to the Dragon's Den from Gold and Silver after you would go and face... Claire? 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 Um, you face Claire and you have to go to the dragons then. Okay, so we were just one floor off. Not too bad. We'll go ahead and see where is our Malk. There it is. We'll go ahead and give Charlie some Malk. Very good. And I do not want to burn, a, burn another Malk. We'll use a potion on Miguel. And we are in fighting shape. Let's go ahead and Take on the ghost lady. I believe she's supposed to be French, maybe? Oh, 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 oh. Or Santa? Her name's Fantina. I kept calling her Fantima. I think Fantima or Fantima is actually a French name. So she is a little a little en français. I say to myself, enfin, I will excel. This is why I dress this way. C'est une performance. I can't even talk. My French is a little rusty. So here we go. It's like every other episode is gonna be a boss fight now. I really like her aesthetic. Not sure what the, I think that the like the little cross on her side is supposed to look like Drift Blim, maybe? That would make sense, wouldn't it? So here we go. Let's see if we can do it. It's a three on three fight. We will 
just to make sure that we can make make this happen. It's gonna use fly, so we might as well use nasty plot. Hopefully that we can survive this. This is gonna raise our special attack sky high. So if we do survive this fly that we're about to come into contact with, then the next turn when we use this flamethrower is gonna definitely do a lot of damage. So hopefully we can survive it. We do survive it, that's very good. This Driftworm's probably got no chance to survive this flamethrower with the special attack boost. So that was very smart on me using pro strats. Very, very good. And we level up to 35. That might be enough for an evolution. So we're gonna head and switch out. She's gonna use Gengar now. So Miguel is probably a good choice here. The ghost type not being effective against the dark type is definitely gonna benefit us here. Gengar is very fast. It's got a good level of special attack too. So we're just gonna wanna try to spam assurance. Ooh, this could hurt. So I don't know what Dazzle, okay. Well, that's not great. I was not expecting that to happen. So I don't know if I have, ooh, this could be bad. This could be bad, ladies and gentlemen. We will swap out to Buster here. The Buster rhymes and see if we can't use a crunch. Give it a good crunch and see what this does. It's gonna eat something? Okay, maybe this is a move that prevents it from dying. And what did that very, oh. I didn't know it had that, that's kind of cheap. It's gonna confuse Rayus, which is fine. I'm actually gonna use this as an opportunity to, to bring back Miguel using the Revival Herb because it heals it up all the way. It's a full, full restore which is nice. Brings it all the way back from fainting. And Buster just got hit with a nasty, nasty attack. We don't want that. So we'll use some, we're gonna be, we're having a lot of milk in this ghost fight. That's probably gonna be a theme. You can bet your bottom dollar on that one. The only problem is that this Gengar is just so fast. So it's gonna be just spam and sludge bomb. I don't know if we're gonna be fast enough to get another hit in on it. Maybe? But we're confused, so we are faster. Probably would have been smart to bring the, uh... Oh, well, they didn't have that stupid seed to bail it out. It probably would have been smart to bring the Quick Claw, but, you know, I didn't think of that. So this is a little more tense than I was expecting it to be, so here we go. This is her ace, Miss Magus. Her final Pokemon. This is the evolution of Mischievous. Introduced in this game, so we're actually gonna just use Buster with Crunch here. Hopefully we'll do some damage and not eat a hit from Confusion. Very good. Okay, so I didn't figure I would take it out, but Buster will be sacrificed here in the moment. And it was Magical Leaf, so that's kind of a, an unexpected but expected move. I guess if you have a Water-type Pokemon, they knew what you were getting into. And we'll give Miguel another shot. Didn't really have as good of an opportunity to make an impact in this fight, unfortunately. But that Gengar definitely threw me for a loop. I was not expecting that to happen. I don't know if Miguel's gonna be faster than this Miss Magus, but it doesn't matter because she knows to use that item, the old Hyper Potion. So that's a bit, a bit of an annoyance. Hopefully two assurances, or just one. I guess it just couldn't handle our heat. Now, I think the reason why that worked out was because having used Crunch previously and lowering its defense benefited Miguel to be able to use a higher power assurance. So, Miss Magus already doesn't have great defense, so that lowered defense plus assurance, bam. Sacre bleu. So winning this battle, our badges don't look quite as grimy right now, but they did the last time for some reason. That will earn you the relic badge. So that's pretty exciting. And we can use Surf. We get some of Fantine, Fantina's Stickers on our balls. And Shadow Claw, which is a great move. It's kind of like Shadow Ball, very similar. But anyway, that's the gym battle, everybody. It was a little tense at the end, but we powered through. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Throwing Diamond, and I'll see you next time. Bye.